What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, The Fourth Cannon. I'm back with another video. First things first, smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I drop new videos. For those of you that are new, my name is Ken. I'm from Philly. I'm an 18-year-old barber. Welcome to my channel. Let's get to it. Today, we have an imperfect canvas. So as you can see, his hairline, he has extreme light spots in his hairline. Other than that, perfect head of hair, healthy hair. So we're gonna take his hair down with our detachable blades. And right now I have my two guard. So with this head, with this canvas, you wanna be careful around the hairline. That's why I'm lightly grazing near the hairline. And the reason why is because you don't wanna take more hair off the receding parts. So he's not really going bald, it's more so receding. Like he has a full head of hair. There's a difference between a receding hairline and just someone going bald. He just has light spots. Um, even in the back of his head right here, towards the right side right here, he just has a natural patch that whenever I cut it, just always cuts lower than everything else. But you know, every client's gonna have imperfections in, in his hair and stuff. Um, but that's, that's what makes barbering fun. You know, you run into challenges like this, because most barbers wouldn't post a haircut like this. This isn't the ideal haircut to post, but I'm using this as a great opportunity to still teach you guys how to shape up someone with an imperfect hairline. So to take a, so to take down his crown area, we're gonna do a two closed. And to start on his taper, he wants an extremely low taper. He doesn't like when I take it up too high. Last time we did a mid taper and he told me he wanted a little bit lower. So that's what we're gonna do this time. Started with my liners, just made the, the tiny guy line. Then I have my lever open with my Babyliss clippers. And I just going up like a half inch. I'm trying to keep it compressed. And then I got rid of that guy line with my lever halfway and then closed. Now I have my one guard with my wall, the wall one guard. And what this is doing, we're setting our second guy line. As you can see, it's already blending out. Like tapers that are small like this, you're barely doing anything. That's why it's gonna take me like two minutes to do this. I have my one and a half guard and I'm debulking with the grain. He has some tricky hair patterns right there. That's why I usually tend to just automatically do a mid taper because it's easier. As you can see, he has those patches in his hair. So right now I have my two guard and I'm using my corners in that area. And I'm still having trouble with that area at this point. So I'm still just trying to flick it out. But sometimes you just gotta go with your instincts. And so I'm really just using different guards to try and get those dark spots out. It's like that dark area right above his ear. And as you can see, I'm using my corners of my blade. I'm not trying to mess with the C cup area. I'm just trying to attack the spots with the dark spots. Now I have my one guard on my Andis Masters, my Coreless Masters. And once again, I'm just using my corners. I'm trying to, you know, just get rid of it. And now I'm using a, a tricky technique. This is a rare technique. So it's called raking. That's the technical term. So when you flip your clipper over like a shape up clipper and kind of go down on the hair with the grain, but you're not fully going with the grain, you're kind of raking, raking it. And now I'm just doing some detail work with my Andis Masters. I'm not gonna show the, so the other side or the back because it's simple. Like this is a, this is a simple haircut, the actual cutting down part and the fading, it's just the hairline that's complicated. So that's what I really wanna focus on today. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys. And as you can see, the taper is crispy. Now we're gonna shape up the back of his neck with our Babyliss FX trimmers. And we're keeping it natural, but we're also keeping it sharp. You don't wanna keep a hairline too natural Otherwise you won't be able to notice the sharpness. So with his hairline, um, what we're gonna do, we, we wash his hair before this. I actually gave him a facial too, a facial spa session. That's something that I offer with my services too. So we gave him like a spa treatment on his face. Now we sprayed hairspray and we washed and conditioned his hair prior to the service. Now we're gonna shape up. He has a weird hairline. 
and not because of the light spots, but if you guys noticed in the beginning of the video, rewind to the beginning of the video, his hairline does not move. The last time I cut him was like a month and a half ago. It's so strange. It's a strange phenomenon. I've never seen it before with any of my clients, but it's like I can shape him up and he'll come back to me two months later and the shape up is still there. Like it's still, you guys can see like my last shape up is still there. So with this client, you cannot push him back at all. You can't because since his hair just stays in place in those spots, you'll notice if it's a pushback. So my best advice with this, as you can see, is I went straight across because he does not have a horseshoe hairline. If someone has a horseshoe hairline, the balding spots will be in the actual corner of his hairline. In this case, it's not. It's in between his widow's peak area and the corner of his vertical bars. So if someone has a horseshoe hairline, then you cannot shape it up straight across. You'll have to shape it up in that horseshoe shape. And now we're just following the natural pattern of his C-cup. You don't want to push it back or, or push the sideburn area back to make a, a skinny ice pick sideburn, unless the client wants that. But that's really becoming obsolete nowadays. Not a lot of people want that. And so right there, you guys can see, I didn't shape this side up yet. The vertical bar part or the C-cup, and it still looks sharp already. So it's a strange, you know, different clients have, have different things that you've never seen before. And this is something that this is my only client where this happens. Like his hairline does not move at all. And it's easy. Like the shape up is easy. It's super easy. I'm just tracing what I did last time. But the key when you're shaping up a receding person is don't push it back. Don't push it back beyond what it already needs to be. You know, every haircut is a pushback but you don't want to push it back unnecessarily. So right here, I'm actually correcting it because it was slanted. So I'm not necessarily pushing it back. I still have room to work with, but I'm just correcting that corner area and fixing it because it was crooked. You know, I'm big on my hairlines being straight, so making it straight. Now with enhancements, with someone who has bald spots in their hairline, do not use fibers. Don't do it. Don't do it because fibers fall out easily. Yes, fibers can make the haircut look more natural, but that's not the key here. Notice how I'm spraying the enhancements. It's not meant to blend the balding spots to look exactly like the spots with hair. That's not the point of enhancements. The point of it is just to make it look better than what it was before the enhancement. So that's what I'm doing. You don't want to make it look fake. Although it does, you know, with a client like this, it's gonna look fake to a certain extent. You don't wanna keep overdoing it. So that's why I stopped. That's why those spots aren't completely brown and black and filled in to match his other hair because I don't wanna make it look fake. It looks good enough. We're gonna hit him with a free freehand trim right here. And now we're gonna use our razor. Shout out to Easy Blade. Use my promo code, the fourth Ken, for a 10% discount. And what this is going to do is this is going this is going to add the contrast. So we added the enhancements. So, so now this is another enhancement, which basically is like the pencil, but this is a natural enhancement. And you can get it by just using your razor or, you know, you can get it with the clippers, but I like to do it with the razor. And this really adds that contrast between the skin and the hair. And it makes it look even more enhanced without having a drawer in it with any pencils or anything. So this is how my client came in today. And this is how he's leaving. Crazy. As you can see, it's just sharp enough. It's not going to look fake. It's going to last a couple days. It's not going to wash directly out. The ash line is going to go away, but the haircut's still going to be sharp. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and follow my Instagram and TikTok. It's the fourth Ken, and I'm out. Peace.